reverse the climate change. This is the slogan of your company, of Climeworks. What does that mean for you? Well, science tells us that in order to achieve climate targets, so to meet the Paris Agreement, by mid of the century, we need to remove gigatons, so billions of tons of CO2 right. from the atmosphere. And uh, that's what we are working on, on at Climeworks. So we are building machines that capture CO2 from the air and we combine that with safe underground storage. Uh, so we permanently remove CO2 from the atmosphere. That's why we came together at least, and even before the Paris Agreement in 2015, I guess, uh, we already worked together since 2013, yeah. a few years after you grounded, you based uh, the, uh, your, your company f uh, as a spin-off from the ETH Zürich. And uh, as far as I remember, even we were the first one at Audi who were yeah, ordering the first uh, demonstrator, isn't it so? That's true, yeah. So we are still, still very proud of it, Audi being our first customer for a demonstration plant. So uh -huh. we, back in the days, we started in the laboratory, then, then we slowly, slowly scaled it up. And the first uh, like scaled up demonstration plant that we ever delivered, that, mm -hmm. that was to Audi. And uh, well, yeah, the, the journey started there. <laughs> We showed that to the board and now I think it's still working. The first, uh, the first uh, demonstrator is still working here around the corner at the University of Rapperswil, yeah. I guess, and still uh, in good shape, I uh, know. But um, afterwards, uh, we are also, we were proud because we could be the, or we were the uh, first one who ordered the 50 tons uh, base module that you uh, invented. Oh, that's right. We, that was kind of the next step on the scale up roadmap so we scaled up our demonstrator into a into one module which can then be multiplied uh, for building larger plants and uh, and they're also uh, proud to have audi uh, as the first customer and uh, for the first plant right yeah and at least it ends up and that's where we are very proud of um, it ends up in yeah now two a uh, big scale uh, demonstrator or a, a full scale uh, sites that we have here around the corner in Zürich, Hinwil. Um, and uh, now we are able to uh, even capture a thousand tons of uh, CO2 out of the ambient air. And uh, that's why we are also very proud of that. Well, that's, that's right. That's, that's what we're doing here in the vicinity of Zurich. Uh, so there we're capturing uh, CO2 from the air to deliver it to, to customers, uh, to a greenhouse and to the beverage industry. Uh, then uh, one step further, so we have, we've changed our business uh, model or like developed a new business model of, of a service. So we learned like starting as an engineer, we build a lot of plants, but many people don't want to buy plants and, and operate them, uh, but they have a different need. So many companies um, and also even private people have the need or want to do something to reduce uh, the amount of CO2 in the air and, and that's what we're offering in Iceland now. That's the interesting thing, uh, Iceland. I think we have to explain a little bit more what is, what is uh, going on in Iceland. Yeah. You are building a new uh, and a bigger uh, demonstrator yes. there? Yes, so we, we started in 2017. Uh, that's when we met the former president of, of Iceland, Olafur Grimson, and he, like, he had the vision of, of turning Iceland into a, as he called it, global pumping station. So uh, to remove CO2 from the air and to safely store it underground. So a negative that's, pumping station. That's exactly, yes. that's really negative for, to create so-called negative emissions. And interesting about Iceland is the geology there. So there are so-called basalt uh, rocks on the ground and the the people in Iceland uh, actually Reykjavik Energy who's a main utility company in Iceland they have developed over the past 10 years a method of safely storing CO2 in these basalt rocks mm -hmm. uh, and the interesting thing about this is they inject the CO2 on the ground and within two years the CO2 converts into stone mm -hmm. and the process is called Carpfix and there's also in the meantime a company called Carpfix that's there's our partner companies and together with them we are now scaling up our operations so Climeworks is right now building a larger plant, a direct air capture yeah. plant in Iceland, uh, taking about 4,000 tons of CO2 from the air every year. And we're handing that over to our Carpfix partners uh, who they are injecting it down. into ground. They pump yeah. it down to, yes. the, uh, to the basalt. Mm -hmm. Um, because this is so interesting for us at least, because uh, from my point of view, we are just closing the whole big circle right now. Yeah. This is a circle project, a circular economy project at least. We bring down the whole uh, carbon uh, which we once brought up uh, out of the air, back into the air and there, ho hopefully store it forever at least, isn't it? 
No, that's important. There, there is a lot of storage space. So available storage space, that's, that is not the limiting factor. Uh, it had, like the sites have to be developed. Uh, and most importantly in Iceland, it is, it is so like there are no questions about, uh, about safety or, or safe and permanence of, of the storage mm -hmm. because what you end up is CO2 in the form of rocks one kilometer underground. We hope that is solid. Yes. <laughs> that's the solid thing. But I think... Um, Looking a little bit in the in in the future, of course, there is something to do with, uh, which I think we should do together, of course, because uh, to bring down the uh, CO2 again inside of the rocks and so on, this is uh, it's a it's a, a, an ambitious aim, and uh, we are all working in this direction. But of course, we have to uh, certify this uh, as well, because there is at the moment we don't have the standard or a gold standard or some uh, platinum and platinum standard or so for that. Do you work on that in the next uh, few years or? That's a work in progress. Uh, that's like the whole circle or the whole process we are developing is is something new. So there are no final existing standards for that mm -hmm. and we are working to create them now. So we believe that within next year uh, we should have a, a certification. So we're working together with notified bodies uh, to design a, uh, yeah, like basically well, on paper a, a process. And to make it would be uh, yeah. then uh, developed uh, so you can at least handle all this stuff. The topic right now, the, the direct air capturing technology becomes more and more in the, in the mind of the people and uh, gets more and more um, uh, a common technology at least. We have to talk even about serial production. Um, at the moment you are just working here and you're building the containers and the modules um, in, in Zurich uh, and it's just, uh, well, from my point of view, it's just good for a few hundred of these containers. But um, what do you think uh, is the next step in going really big because you need a few thousand of these uh, modules in the next few years? Well, that's absolutely uh, correct. So today we are capturing thousands of tons uh, in the future. Uh, we will capture millions of, of, ton, of tons and eventually we have to think of billions of tons uh, capturing, which requires a substantial scale up. So what we're actually speaking of is not, not building up only a company, but rather building up an entire industry and how to tackle this challenge. One important aspect of our strategy of, of Climeworks, how we designed uh, our, our system is a, a very modular approach. So our CO2 capture plants are, are fully modular based, of, uh, based on container modules, um, which can be scaled by mass production, basically. So it's actually very similar to the car industry. So the car industry has become very, very efficient in building individual modules. pieces, uh, modules, right? And millions of that, and, and we believe that also for what we are doing, this is a very smart approach. Uh, mm -hmm. So rather than thinking of making individual plants and components bigger and bigger, rather thinking of how to multiply them, multiply them in numbers. So that's that's a challenge uh, we are ahead of, and that's that's the general principle uh, based on how we design our systems, making them mass manufacturable. It's very difficult for me to understand how it really works. How does the CO2 comes at least? To your container and how does it release it again? Could you explain that a little bit? The basic principle is, is quite simple. In our containers there is a filter material uh, in, in, in a two-step process. First we pull air through it, so we have fans that are that are pulling air through the filter. In the filter you can imagine it as a sponge. It's like a porous material with a lot of porous holes inside where the air can pass through and at the surface the CO2 is bound. So it's just captures out the CO2 out of, out of the airstream. Mm -hmm. uh, we do that until this filter is filled with CO2. Then we close the container, we heat it up, and we can extract concentrated CO2 from it. Is the material an absorber or is it an adsorber? It's an ad, it's a so-called adsorber. adsorption so because it's a no solid material. Okay. So it's, it's no really it's a, it's real a solid. chemical um, binding of the of the CO2. Yeah, so if it is called so-called chemi chemisorption. So there is a, there is this like a slight chemical reaction, okay. uh, if you like, but it's 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 a passive one. So so during the capturing phase of the CO2, the only 
active part of the of the plant is the ventilator that is that is pulling air through it, and that that capturing of CO2 happens passively. And and since it's a very so if you want it's a very soft binding uh, only, and by heating the material to around 100 degree, you lose the binding again, and that's how you can how you can extract the CO2 again. Yeah. Okay, you extract it, and then what happens with the CO2 uh, afterwards? Uh, well, it it's depends. It depends on the, the on the application. <laughs> so we have CO2 in concentrated form. We can liquefy it, uh, or we can just compress it. Uh, what we do in Iceland is we compress the CO2, and then at about a pressure of around 20 bar, uh, it is injected oh. underground. So so that's that's what's happening. In other applications, we liquefy the CO2 when we supply it to the beverage industry, as an example. So there are different. Okay, if you use it for yes. other things yes. as a raw material yes. and so on. Exactly. So we have to talk about uh, costs, at least. Um, do you think that um, the that there is still some uh, developing ongoing that uh, the costs will go down and will reach well at least the uh, range of let's say so about 30 40 euros uh, um, per ton well uh, obviously reducing the cost this is one of the major challenge of of our industry and and of climate so with from generation to generation we increase the efficiency of our systems and and correspondingly reduce costs uh, so currently we are at, at several hundred dollars uh, per ton and the the, uh, the aim is to reduce that further so the the magic uh, magic number uh, the whole industry has in mind is is a order of around hundred dollars uh, per ton of co2 uh, capturing uh, costs so that's where we are not not yet today, uh, but uh, but that's where we. But there's a roadmap, the maybe. We'll there's a roadmap, and it's, it's also not the next step. So we believe rather like we have a rather concrete path uh, to the range to 200, uh, 250 dollars per ton, and then there is further optimization. But having in mind where we stand, I, I like to compare it to kind of back in the days when you had the first car, and if you compare the very first car prototype to a factory uh, which is producing millions of cars, so there are it's a huge potential of, of optimizing, right? And so so it's the same uh, absolutely yeah. because we went together the whole roadmap uh, from 2013 to now and we started with 30,000 uh, euros per ton and now we are about let's say so thousand euros 500 yeah. to thousand euros per yeah. ton if you look at other industries if you look at the <laughs> photovoltaic industry how men like they they accomplished cost reduction by factors like by large large factors and much much more than than we are even aiming at so so i believe by by just mass producing optimizing of, of processes there are, so there's there's still a lot a lot in uh, to work on uh, I, uh, one of our uh, development leaders once said between between today and the hundred dollars per ton it's just humans in between so there's no physical reason why why it wouldn't work really? and uh, okay yeah. let's talk about the future at least we are still having a cooperation with you uh, what do you think is uh, the next step in our cooperation yeah. Well, uh, I think we are we are thrilled by the general interest uh, of of the industry, and we are we are thrilled also to have uh, Audi as a customer for our new service of of uh, removing CO2 uh, from the air, and uh, we are expanding that. So the challenge is that we are constantly expanding capacity, and we need pioneering customers such as Audi who who help us uh, like proving and showing that there is a market so we can on the other hand trigger trigger investments and, and that's what we do on on several layers like we are even selling CO2 to uh, consumers or to private individuals so you could also as a person you could go to our website and and have a subscription to it that, we, <laughs> that we turn CO2 into stone for you so that's that's great uh, please tell a lot of people like we many people ask us hey um, how, what what could I do? It's so great what you're doing, and 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 I would like to contribute and, and do something for my own CO2 footprint, and uh, that's why last last year we started a prototype. And I think besides. Uh, Besides a commercial collaboration on on removing CO2 on behalf of companies, on behalf of Audi, also uh, like our vision is inspiring one billion people to remove CO2 from the air, and and to to do that we need the help of others. So we need people to spread the word. Uh, Audi is a very very famous brand, and uh, if I think for my personally as a as a dream thinking of the planet, if your engagement and what we are doing could lead to many many other people follow you uh, and follow you as a brand, I think that could be a, a really good way forward and we could we could reach something really meaningful here. Absolutely, you already inspired me. That's why we're here.